So far, we set up our app with the basic components that we'll need. And also in the last episode, we set up the onboarding screens for the app. So the user will be greeted with these screens the first time they access the app. In this episode, we'll look at setting up the bottom tabs we have here. The bottom tabs will be the main navigation for this application. So back in the code editor, let's install one package for the bottom tabs. So for this one, we'll be using the bottom tabs from React Navigation. So NPS Expo install at React Navigation bottom tabs. Once that is done, we can start our app again. And then we can refresh our app. And then we can proceed from here. So the work for the bottom tabs will start in our navigators directory. Over here, we'll create a new file and we'll call root tabs, meaning the root tabs for application. So where you create the component root tabs and then we export as default. Now to create the tabs, we import create bottom tab navigator from our bottom tabs package we just installed. And then at the top, we create the tab, create bottom tab navigator, like so. And then the root component will return will be the tab dot navigator. And inside this, we'll have tab dot screens. Now the first screen we'll be having is the home component. So we can import the home screen over here. So we import the home from the screens, like so. And for this, the name of the screen will be home. And then the component will be the home component. And then to see the output of what we've done so far, we go to the app.js file and import the root stack. So we import the root stack. We can do that just after the onboarding stack. So root tabs like so, and then replace the home here with the root tabs. So in that case, we don't need the home screen anymore. Good. Now we see that we have the contents of the home and then we have a header. Now concerning the header, each of the screens in the tab will have its own header. So we don't need the header for the root tabs. To continue our work, let's go back to the root tab here. Now, if we refer to our images, we see that we have four tabs here. So meaning we have four screens in the tabs. So we can copy and paste this three more times. Now we have search, cut, and then profile. So we can change the names here to search. cut and then profile. For now, we only have one component here. We we'll implement the individual ones later. Now let's start this a bit via the tab.navigator. So right here, we'll pass the screen options. By this time around, we'll be passing the function as we'll be doing something a bit more complex. So we'll pass the function and then a return which will be wrapping the objects like so. Over here, the first property we'll be passing is a tab bar style. This will be an object that will style the tab bar as a whole. The first option we want to set is the background color. So meaning we need to bring in our colors. So at the top, we import our colors. So we bring in the colors from our theme file. And then we set the background color to colors.primary and also there is a faint border at the top and we'll set that color to the secondary color so border top color set it to colors.secondary it's hard to see it but over there once this background is changed it will be clear now to prevent any kind of undefined errors let's put the question mark before assessing these colors 
Then after this, we'll set the border top width to 2 pixels and then we'll set a height of 60 pixels. After this, we want to style the tab bar item. So tab bar item style. That is each of the items in the tab bar. For this one, we'll just give it a pattern vertical of 5 to push the text close to the icon a bit. After this one, we want to set the tab bar inactive tint color. Now this will be the color of the content of the tab bar when it has not been selected. So for this one, we'll use the tertiary color. So colors dot tertiary, then we'll lighten it a bit. After this, we'll set the active one. So tab bar active tint color. And this will use the accent color. And then once again, we'll lighten it a bit. Now after this, we want to handle the icons of the tabs. So for that, we'll pass another key, tab bar icon. So we pass a function instead. Now this function will have access to a size and then a color. The color will be coming from the inactive and then the active tint colors. So over here, what we'll be doing is that we'll check for each of the routes and then return an icon appropriately. So first, we'll set a variable that we'll call icon name. And then to be able to tell which route we are on, we need to bring in the route variable. And we can get that from the screen options function, like so. Now, first of all, we check if the route.name equals home. If that's the case, then we'll set icon name to home. And in this case, we'll be returning an icon from ant design. So we'll bring in ant design from expo vector icon. Expo vector icons. Like so. And then over here, we'll return the ant design icon. So the name of the icon will be the icon name. And then the size will be the received size. And then the color will be passed as well. Now for the others, we'll be using the feather icon pack. So we can set the icon name and return the icon after we are done. So for the next one, we'll check if the route.name equals search. If that's the case, we'll set the icon name and the icon will be search. You can copy and paste this one more time. And in this case, we are checking if the route name is cut. And in that case, we set the icon to shopping cart. And then lastly, we we'll check if the name of the icon is profile. And then we we'll set the icon to user. After all this, we we'll return the feather icon. And we'll be getting feather from Expo Vector Icons. Like so. And to have all the properties of this one. Now it looks to me that the feather icons are a bit bigger than the ant design icon. So I can do size plus one to match it out. Now if it looks okay on your end, you can leave it like that. Now let's pass a couple of properties. First of all, we said we'll be hiding this header. So we set header shown to false. Also, we set tab bar hide on keyboard to true. This will ensure that when we have the keyboard open on a particular page, the tab bar will be hidden so that it will not be disturbing the content on the page. With this done, if we bring back our screens, 
it looks like we've done all we needed to do for the tab bar. So it looks like we are done with this part. I'll put a link to what we've done here in the description so you can check it out.